Hello. Uh, let's do this question. Number of digit one. It's a last. It's a nasty little question. How do we do it? Well, we given an integer, and we're going to count how many digit ones appear in a sequence of numbers from zero all the way up to n. Obviously, there's no one and zero, so it's really just from one to n. Um, so how do we do this? We could do a brute force approach and go through each of the numbers uh, from zero to n and just do a count, like convert the number to a string and then count how many digits in each string and then just add it up all the way up to n. That would be like a sort of a linear approach. Maybe a lin maybe an n log n. But we see that n goes up to 10 power of 9, so that's not fast enough. We could try a um, try to get it down to like log log a log n solution. But it's kind of tricky, so we want to think. Um, let's think about it in terms of how many ones we could find up to n per digit. So for example, if we have 113, how many ones in the first digit here? How many ones in the second digit? How many ones in, in the third one? And then add them all up. Let's see if that gives, gives us uh, the answer. So let's just consider the, the first digit here, three here, and think how many, well, how many ones in the range zero to zero to nine? There's just one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only one. So if you take this uh, number, 113, and we divide it by 10, we're getting how many 10s are in here. And we see that there's 11 10s. So we, so we know that there is at least um, 11 ones in the first digit. The answer is actually 14 ones in the first digit because we actually, if we get, we basically get this 11, 113 divided by 10 and we get 11 tens. So each one has a one in them, but we're missing out the case where we had this one, two, three here. So, so that would also add to the answer by one. How do we account for that? Well, We could um, get do 113, so we could add something to it, this answer, and do modulus 10. We take 113 modulus 10, we get 3. Well, if this was just 110, and we do 110 modulus 10, we get 0, in which case the answer would be 13, not 14. In any other case, if you have hundred anything, if you have a number greater than one hundred and ten, so any number between one hundred and ten, one hundred and eleven, and one hundred nineteen, we would have to add a one to the answer. So any number between one 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 to one one nine. We have to add an an a 1 to this uh, answer that we get for the first place. So we just have to check if this does not equal to 0. Uh, if it's not equal to 0, then we add to the answer. And that works. So, so this will give us uh, 14. Right. And then we calculate for the second digit how many ones in there. Well, let's think. 
this will be 113 divided by 100 now. So it's like we're thinking how many ones in 100, in 100 digits, in 100 numbers. So that means 0 to 99. In the, in the second digit, in the second digit, that means there'll be 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 19. And nowhere else, actually. So that's just 10. There are 10. So we th so all we have to say is how many hundreds go into 113? There's one. And we know that there's 10 ones in 100. So it'll be 10 times this. OK, but we're definitely missing some. So it'll be at least this number here. But we're definitely missing some numbers, as we'll see in the, in the uh, second digits. So we're missing the numbers from 113, 110 to 113. Because we see that the digit here and digit here is, the second digit here would, there's four of them, four ones. So the answer should be 10 plus four, 14 again. Is it? 10 plus 4, 14. Yes. Yes, that's that's correct. And let me go back to this one. Was that was that actually 14? So you have 113 divided by 10. You have 11 plus um, 1. Oh, this was actually 12. Whoops, sorry. And this one's 14. So, so far we have... 12 plus 14. Okay. But how do we actually uh, make calculate this? Well, there is a problem. If we consider it a larger number... Okay, let's just assume for now that... Um, if we take the 113 modulus 100, we get 13 in this case. Um, 13 in this case, but we don't want to add 13, of, of course, to our answer because we only know we only want the top four. So we have to subtract uh, minus four, or minus um, 10. So if you, if you subtract minus 10, then we get three. So we're adding three, but that's a bit much. So let's just add one because you actually want to add 4 to this answer. Adding 4 will give us um, 10 plus 4, which is 14. Because if, if we subtract 1, then we get 13. No, we get 3. So that will be counting... Um, that will be counting 111 to 113. But we're missing the 110 uh, digit, the uh, second second digit, which is one. So you have to add one. Now the problem. Let's think about uh, some issues here. What if can we can we generalize this form a little bit better? What happens if we were if the number was actually 120? If the number was 120 and we do 113 modulus 100. Sorry, 120 modulus 100, 120 modulus 100. Uh, we get 20, then we subtract 10 to get 10 plus 1 is 11. That's a bit much though. We get 11. Eleven is like a bit too much. Because we know the maximum number of ones in a second digit place within a hundred, the sequence within a hundred numbers is um, is ten, but here we're getting eleven. So we probably want to take the max of this 
uh, the min of this number and 10. Same goes for like if this is like 70, 170 modulus 10, well, modulus 100, it gives us 70, we're minus 10 plus 1, uh, it's 61. 61 is definitely too much, so we take the min, which is 10, because we know 10, there are still 10 within this range from uh, 0 to 70. Okay, what about if the number was something like um, 100, uh, 103? If it was 103 more just 100, then we get 3. And then we subtract 10, so we get a negative number. We get minus 7 plus 1, so we get minus 6. And we're taking the min of minus 6 and 10, we get minus 6, but that's not good. In this case, the answer should be zero because there are no ones um, from the range of zero to three. So what do we do here? Well, we can say the max, take the max of what, whatever this is and zero. Alright, so we, we clamp it to zero, make sure it doesn't go below zero. So this this answer here could this answer here would is now clamped between zero and ten. Which is what we want. Um, and we could probably generalize this a little bit better and say this is n and this is n. Alright, but what if so that's so that's the um, the second digit. Now let's think the third, the third digit here. If we notice a pattern. We can just do n divided by a thousand. Um, and how many in a, how many ones in a, in, how many ones in the third digit, third digit, in a thousand? Well, there is a thousand. So it's a thousand times this. Okay, this formula is not right. It should be. 10 times this. So let's delete um, this for now. Oh, it's not a thousand, sorry, it's 100 times thousand plus the min of the max. of n modulus 1000 minus 100 plus 1, 0, and 100. So let's see if uh, we, we've just kind of taken this pattern and just extended it for the next digit and see if it works. Well, we're doing 113 divided by 1000. There's 0 thousands going to that. So we multiply 100 by 0, we get 0, which makes sense. But let's see if um, there are any... Because we let's see that in the third digits places, there are actually um, 14. There are actually 14 of these. In the uh, 14 ones in the, in the digits place from 0 to 113. So let's see if this gives us 14. Well, we're doing an n modulus of 1000, so it gives us 113, and we do minus 100, so we get 13 plus 1, that's 14. And yep, so this gives us 14. Yeah, and that's, that's the pattern. So we just keep doing this for all possible um, digits there are. And we know that there are 10 to the power of 9. Um, it goes up to 10 to the power of 9, so that means there are 10 digits. So do this, do this 10 times, and we're sweet. We could actually probably um, use the same for the formula for this case here. So this, this case is really just 1 times n divided by 10 plus the min, the max, of n modulus 
uh, 10 minus 10 plus 1, 0, 10. So minus 1 plus 1. And modulus 10 minus 1 plus 1. 1. Does this work? Well, is this equivalent to this? Because that's our initial formula. Well, it's really just n modulus 10. That's what we're doing here. Um, minus 1 plus 1, that's doing nothing. So we're saying, what's the max of the modulus n0? We'll always be, we could always just take this because then it'll be negative. We're not actually subtracting anything. And then we take the min of that and 1. Um, if this was 0, then we then it, we make it 0. If this was anything other than 0, then, we, then it's 1, which is the same as this. Yeah, so we could pretty much generalize everything, all the cases, all the digits. And we know there's 10 digits. So we can go from int i is equal to 0, i less than or equal to 9, because there's 10, plus plus i. Then we could have like a int. Okay, let's see if there's any overflow to be just kind of got to be careful here. So Right, this is a billion, and I think an int can go up to a billion. It can go up to two billion and something, but we're going from one. Uh, so let's say we start at one, and then every time we have to do t times equals to ten. So we're multi multiplying by 10. Um, how many times? Uh, well, exactly 10 times. That's 10 to the power of 10. 10 to the power of 10 is uh, too large to fit in an int. So we could probably make this a long, long, like that. We also need to keep track of the previous t because we have 10 and we have 1. And we, we like, so for example, we have 100 and 10. Then, so we could maybe say long, long s is equal to the previous t. Now we could keep track of an answer, like int answer, and just add to the answer the formula. And the formula is s, so that's the previous t, times n divided by 100, no, n divided by t plus the minimum of the max of n modulus t minus s plus 1, 0, 100. Oh, no, uh, that should be s. And then return the answer at the end. I also have to look at um, because this is a long long. We said T and S is a long long. Then this has to be a long long. So we can say zero L L. Yep. So it works for the largest case. So that's a good sign. And let's just test the edge case of zero. Should be zero. Awesome, awesome.